Before we get started, remember to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button so I can get more followers as well as create better content for you guys. Hey there YouTube. So I've been asked a lot of questions uh, for two specific shoes over the last several days. Uh, they are the Vapor Street, made out of React technology, and the Epic React, also made with React technology. So there's been a lot of questions in terms of how these shoes compare, as well as what they're good at, what they're bad at. Uh, so I'm going to do a little comparison video for you guys. So I've already done individual reviews for the both the Vapor Street as well as the Epic React. I'm going to link those below if you're interested. What's great about this review now is that it's pretty timely. Uh, React has been in the market for about three to four weeks at this point uh, if you were able to get an early pair. What's really great about React is uh, I surprisingly have seen a lot of people have the Epic React on and it's definitely people that go to the gym, people that go run uh, and I think that's a phenomenal thing because uh, Nike did a great thing in terms of getting the sneaker to market quickly and also having people buy it that obviously are not sneakerheads. So I'm going to start with the uppers. The Epic React has a fly knit upper it is stretchy uh, in some parts where the where you need stretch, so places like the tongue as well as some parts of the toe box. But for the most part, extremely rigid. But it is a softer knit, uh, so it's not as harsh as the Vapor Streets upper. Uh, the Vapor Streets upper actually is scratchy to the feel. So if you kind of hear this, uh, it's because it's a little scratchy and it's a little rough. And so uh, from a comfort perspective. I don't feel it because I typically have socks on and both of them are relatively flexible, but I would say on the upper side, uh, this is a little more rigid, which is not the worst thing in the world, uh, but it's also not as soft as the Epic React. The other thing is in terms of breathability, I would say that the fly knits on the Epic React versus the Vapor Street um, is almost about the same, but I would give that edge out to the Epic React. And the main reason is because uh, I think it actually has a really thin knit compared to the Vapor Street. Uh, this feels much more substantial in many parts. Next up is a sole. So one of the major questions that everybody has about the Epic React, and let's be honest, no one has had the shoe long enough to know how good it's going to be in terms of durability. Uh, but I, my guess, regardless of what Nike says, is that it's still not going to be the greatest. So looking at this sole, this is probably about seven or eight wears. Uh, and you can start seeing some of the React start rubbing off. Uh, with that said, I can't say that the shoe feels substantially any different because it's rubbed off. I haven't really lost any traction and I haven't lost any bounce to it. Um, so moot point as of now, but you know, probably do a review in, in the future to understand whether or not these really wear away. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that they will. The Vapor Street in comparison has rubber all throughout. And so I think it does a much better job in terms of durability. Even though, uh, actually let me bring the other red pair out that I have. Uh, I've worn these probably around like three times so far uh, in the week that I've had them, and right now there's definitely no wear to them uh, at all. So they've been relatively durable thus far, and so hopefully they remain that way, but it's completely encased in rubber where the React is, and uh, I don't have any issues there. The other thing to note about the sole, so a lot of people probably wonder why that the, there's these type of striations. Um, we thought it was a copy boost, uh, but it's obviously not, because if you look at the sole of the Vapor Street, uh, it's actually much more line-like, uh, so there's not that, that ripple effect that the Epic React has. So just design cue difference, but I think it's important to note because a lot of people uh, think that there's a reason to, to look like this and it's to look like Boost, and kind of in this shoe, you can realize that it's not. Next up, weight. Uh, the Epic React, extremely light. This is also light, but it's nowhere even close to this now that I'm comparing the two. Um, this is just a much lighter shoe in general. It's probably because there's significantly less rubber, which makes sense. Uh, but even think, I think on the sole, if you kind of, if you kind of just feel the sole, there's kind of a different density to it. It feels like the Vapor Street has much higher density to it uh, in terms of the the the, the React that the, that's put in here, and this is a little squishier. And so, kind of looking at the squish test, uh, this just does not squish down as much, and it could be just because of the uh, because of the rubber, but. You can see here that the, the squishiness factor is pretty darn high. In terms of comfort, I'd have to say it really depends on what you're looking for. So what's interesting about the Epic React is I've run in these, I've also walked in these, I've also gone to the gym in these. 
is they actually kind of they feel like they stiffen up whenever you exercise with them. So that actually has a great feel to it. And so that bounceability as well as kind of stiffness when you need it uh, is one of my favorite things about the Epic React. The Vapor Shooter on the other hand is a much more streamlined, really, really futuristic looking shoe. Uh, this specific triple black version is probably extremely good for tech wear. Um, but I'd have to say that it's not made for running or the gym. So I actually tried doing this yesterday. I, I got a bunch of YouTube comments asking me if these are for running. So I decided to go on a treadmill. Uh, it's not the best for running. I think it might have to do with the upper itself. Uh, the fly it just isn't as soft and, and easily flexible. And really the second piece of it is, is it, it feels, if you kind of look at the bottom, even though it's designed against a running shoe, um, I think they kind of needed either something softer for the sole if it was going to be a running shoe because it's, it's there's a I really don't know how to describe it, but it's just not as great for working out. It's not bad at all by any means. Like it's, it, it does run well um, because it's made out of React and there's a large piece of it uh, on here. But I would have to give out the edge to the Epic React on comfort and this definitely on style. Like I'm gonna wear this day in day out because it fits with my outfits, but I'm gonna wear this um, whenever I'm gonna go walking for long distances and doing things that require uh, more activity and also that are lighter so that you know every ounce helps if you're running a marathon or something like that. In terms of price point, so these are the Epic Reacts are 150 which is actually a great price point if you think about it. The predecessor to the Epic React is a Lunar Epic 2 uh, and those were actually $10 more at 160 so Nike brought a new tech and also charged less for it. Uh, these are 180 retail and extremely hard to get uh, so these are not the same by any means. Uh, would, are these worth the extra $30? I think from a design perspective, absolutely. These look phenomenal. I like the look of these a lot more than I like the look of these, but um, that's only if you really like the look. And if you're looking for a shoe for running and other types of activities, these won't fit the bill. And so I'm not sure if they're worth the $30 if you're not looking to, to have a futuristic looking shoe as part of your repertoire. Sizing wise, I would say definitely go true to size on both. I actually went up, uh, half a size on the Epic React, and I really wish I kind of had the true to size ones. I went true to size on the Vapor Streets, and they fit perfectly. So definitely true to size on both the Epic React as well as Vapor Streets. But overall, these two shoes are absolutely phenomenal. I don't think you can go wrong buying any of them. With that said, uh, if I had to edge it out for the normal consumer, I would definitely go Epic React. And even then, despite the fact that I love the way the Vapor Street looks, and it's my actually preferred shoe over the Epic React, I would still recommend the Epic React over the Vapor Street. Uh, the reason for that is those $30 actually do make a difference. I mean, it's almost 20%, which is huge. Uh, but even beyond that, from a if you I, I could only own one, this would be the pair. Uh, I'd probably also pick up a black pair just because I'm actually always, always was afraid to get these dirty. Um, but with that said, I know that there's going to be a lot of colorways uh, with the Epic React that will come out eventually, so I'm not too scared. And that's it, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you bought a pair of either the Vapor Streets or the Epic Reacts and your thoughts on the two. And if you own both pairs, how do you feel about them? There was a, definitely a commenter from one of my previous videos that had both, uh, and he actually liked the Epic Reacts more than the Vapor Streets and decided to get rid of his. Uh, so if anyone else has things like that, any other comments, uh, any other questions that you might have, I can do a future video. So I assume I'm, I'm actually gonna do a much longer term video for the Epic Streets anyway, just because I feel like everyone's gonna wanna know how long they, how long did these things last? And that's it guys, that was the Vapor Street versus the Epic React. Until next time, peace.